This what is up, guys? Dancing weirdly uh, in silence. Oh, this is a new one, babe. Don't what should I call this one? That dance. This is ever. like the the elevated bird dance. This is like, look at that. Uh, uh, uh. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, uh, uh. For those of you who have seen my Christmas time bird dance, caca. This is like the elevated. Elevated version. Both of these are the stupidest dances I've ever seen in my life. Two point oh, baby. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, what up, guys? Oh, Hello, Lexi Panos here. Family. For those of you who don't know who I am, but most of you do. Hi. Justin smiles here. For my those husband. of you who are seeing this chocolate man all up in the screen, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, we're excited to be back, guys. Partners in Shine which is what we call ourselves. Yes. We're happy to be back. We had a, a brief stint slash hiatus um, of being on tour. We were on tour in Australia and New Zealand for three months, ooh, ooh. leading our workshops, the Bridge Experience, and um, facilitating some awesome breakthroughs for people and um, just kicking some ass, kicking some ass overseas. Yes. Sometimes you got to do that. Kicking. What up? Let's see who's on here real quick. We got Neri, Christy, Kirsten, Chloe, Catherine, Kit, Kit, Kat. What up? Shanina. Michael, Lynn, Shanina, Liz, Aaron, Cheyenne, Marissa. What up, fam? Ingrid. Ingrid. Yeah, Kayla, Suniva. Oh, Preston. Hi. Are you on? Oh, no. <laughs> You're reading the comments from before, remember? Oh, am I? Yep. Oh. This is from when you posted your video today. Oh, well, here's the people <laughs> coming in. Amber, exactly. what up, what up? I see a lot of the Soul School tribe, the Stretch 22 tribe, the Integrate tribe, the Bridge Experience tribe. The Australian tribe. The New Zealand tribe, the San Diego tribe. The, the human tribe. tribe. What up, guys? So, um, first and foremost, I just thought about something. What do you think about? When they say ass kicking, is does that mean that someone was kicking a donkey at some point? And they said... <laughs> We've been kicking some ass, and then it became. Like, where did that come from? Yes, you're saying? is the origins of that ass kicking probably coming from animal cruelty? Oh, if so, we may need to not use that. Yes, I'm just checking. <laughs> just if checking. anyone knows the origin of the phrase ass kicking, please put it on there. Please let us know. Tina, um, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we were just on the cover of Inspired Coach, and Tina said she loved. Ah. Uh, Loved it. Thanks. Conroy. Yes. Conroy. What up? What up? Yes, indeed. Sienna, indeed. Adam. What up, Adam? Christy. Christy again. Yep. Nicole. Oh, you guys are amazing. Love all this love you guys are showing. Uh, keep the comments coming. You are awesome, Sauce. Um, so let's get straight into business. Yes. Biz ass. Business. Business. Yes. For those of you who don't know, um, Preston and I, kind of last minute, yep. <laughs> what, like a month ago? We came back from Australia. And no, we, we were in Australia. We were in Australia, okay. Right? We were in Australia. It's like a month ago. Yes. In Australia. And we decided to do crack. So that's what we did happened. not decide to do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell them the story. No, so what we did was we were in Australia and we were traveling around. We're in a new city kind of each week. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about our amazing apartment that we love so much in the heart of Venice, California, best neighborhood, loved our hood, loved our place, um, but we were never home. And we were looking at our schedule for this year and lo and behold, we were basically gone June, July, August, September, and possibly October. So we're like, does it really make sense to continue to pay rent if we're not actually going to be there? And does it really make sense to stay there if there's some other places that we're considering, especially in considering potentially starting a family? Not pregnant yet, but you know, it's in the it's in the future maybe plans. So caveat, <laughs> caveat. So um, both Alexi and I both separately and also together have always and in some ways flirted with this idea of minimalism. Yes. Flirted with this idea yes. of shedding skin and, and not having a bunch of things. And so right when Alexi and I met, I actually got rid of my place, gave away damn near all, everything I had, and moved in with my mom for a little bit while I was going to figure out what was next. And Alexi has done this mm -hmm. quite a few times, I including have. moving to L.A. And 
leaving a place that I bought and remodeled and furnished. And I was like, I'm just going to bring my books and my clothes. And here's the thing. We had just watched a documentary called Minimalism a few months back. And well, I watched it and I got like really inspired. And I was like, okay, we got to we got to do this again. Let's purge. Let's clear. Let's simplify. Let's get rid of this stuff. And Preston and I already live pretty close to the ground. Like in terms of most Westerners, we don't have that much stuff. But when we were packing and purging, we realized we had a lot more than we actually needed. And it goes back to this whole idea of consumerism being really the, the heart of reminding us that we don't have enough. And the whole consumeristic market is built on telling us that we're not good enough unless we have this product. We're not good enough unless we live in the zip code. We're not good enough unless we have these types of clothes or these types of shoes or, you know, this type of car. We are not good enough. So you need to consistently buy more until you feel like you're good enough, which you'll never feel because you're buying it from the wrong intention. You're hoarding from the wrong intention. And it was funny, too, because actually clearing out my closet I pulled out certain clothes and I was like, oh, I literally bought this when I was having a shit day <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and I never wore it, but I bought it because something outside of myself triggered something within my subconscious, triggered an insecurity and went, oh, okay, well, maybe if I buy this, I'll feel better. Mm -hmm. And I got a quick dopamine hit of that, that thing that buying new stuff does for us. And yet it sat in my closet and it had no life, had no life to it. So all of that to say that we chose kind of this nomadic lifestyle because um, we recognize that there's just so much more to life than collecting things. There's yeah. experiences to collect. There's moments to collect. There's places to, to be inspired by and to explore. And we figured, you know, we don't have kids yet, so why not explore? Exactly. So, yeah, we've been talking about and um, – Really just this understanding of, of sometimes you need to downgrade your things in order to upgrade your experiences. And so for us, paying thousands of dollars to live in the premier neighborhood in Los Angeles while we essentially traveled most of the damn time um, became a conversation of like, why not now? Like, like So if we're not going to do it, I mean, if we're going to do it, it's going to have to be now. So, <laughs> yes. so what that looks like for now is uh, we're in San Diego, we San are. Diego. We're in San Diego. We are in Wales, vagina. Wales, vagina. For any of you who have seen Anchorman, San Diego. I'm pretty sure it means Wales, vagina. Yes, and it's very uh, beautiful here, and uh, beautiful and easy and safe and uh, you know, awesome. Awesome. You know, every place has its thing and Encinitas in particular has a very particular thing, which is like this entrepreneur slash hippie thing that's happening and it's beautiful and we're loving it. Uh, so, yeah. Look at this. Someone has the name Preston Pandos. That's like a combination of our names. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> we got to show that dude's comment. Yeah, we're going to show your name so people can see. Preston Pandas. Yes. How cool is this that we can show people stuff? Yeah, it is. It's Preston awesome. Pandas. Um, yeah, so we really wanted to share with you guys as a call to action. Um, he said, me Greek. <laughs> exactly. See? It's my, it's my Greek brother. What up? Um, we wanted to share this as a call to action to you. To A, it's not that you have to get rid of your life. But as a call to action to remind you that you're actually way more abundant, like extraordinarily more abundant than you're giving yourself credit for. And how do we know? Because you're watching this thing. First of all, let's talk about that. You're watching this crazy, two crazy people on some sort of device, whether it be your cell phone or a computer that I'm guessing is probably pretty expensive. You have internet connection or access to internet connection. And yet so many of us are walking around going, there's not enough. I don't have enough. I need more. I need more. I need more. And we're, we're living from this pervasive scarcity mentality when in fact we are cluttered. We have an overabundance of shit in our lives, mm -hmm. which is why there's no space for new to come in because there's no room. There is no room. Yeah. Um, everything in nature sheds. You know, we, we look at the snake and, and we look at the, the, the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. We look at the, 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 the leaves on the trees and how everything shifts and sheds. And so um, 
it felt really good and it continues to feel good. And we want to get to a space where we own like, you know, like a total of a hundred things right now. It's essentialism. Yes. Right Ooh. now, what we yes. got, what we got to was we took a two bedroom place. A with big place. All kinds of stuff. And all of that is in, is in a 10 by 10 box, essentially. Um, so we've pared down from here to like there. And now we're just traveling with the suitcase and yeah. next, next Italy. Uh, well, Colorado for me next, Ohio for you next, yes. Italy next, Europe will be in Greece, we'll be in Africa for Epic, then we'll be in the wilderness, living in the woods for a while, and then we'll be a Burning Man, and then Hawaii, and then who knows? Yep. Yeah. Lots of goodness. What do you guys want to talk about outside of this? Yeah. Someone asked us some questions. But get rid of your shit. That's what it comes down to is like keep shedding your skin. Yeah. Um, because even, even, you know, that's why we, we loofah. That's why we, we exfoliate, we, we exfoliate our, our bodies yeah. uh, to create space for the new, for, for, for creativity, to, to expand the container by emptying the container. And so, uh, you know, this is the thing we all get to step into. Yeah. And it's this thing of, <laughs> Everyone that knows me knows I use cups and water a lot as metaphors. That's lemon, by the way. It's not nasty shit in there. It's mm -hmm. lemon. I'm being healthy. I'm alkalinizing my body. But if this is your life and your life is, let's say, full to the brim, and you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like your closet is overflowing. Your junk drawer is like 10 junk drawers. You have no idea where any of your stuff is. And you look at your stuff and you're like, I have nothing to wear. Yes, you do, girl. You have a lot of stuff to wear. That means your life is up to here. It's overflowing. And then you want more stuff to come in and there's just no room. There's just no room. So you have to create space. And guys, this can even mean, hate to say it, this can even mean people. It can even mean shedding mm -hmm. people. Like a lot of us, myself included, I have this thing where it's like, I love people so hard that I don't ever want to let them go. But sometimes it's time. Sometimes it's time to move on. And sometimes... Our, our most, you know, well-intentioned friendships and the friendships that served us for so many years have now outgrown who we are and who we're becoming and who we're stepping into. So sometimes that even looks like people. Yes, you have to divorce the, and it really the thing that we really get to shed is the limiting beliefs and stories that keep us small. Um, people, limiting beliefs, and all that crap that you collect. Here's the thing, guys, and you want, you want a, a real hack I've been doing this for years. When I say years, and it's, this is what's also gotten me in trouble. Um, One of those, huh? <laughs> yes. So, so for years, every time I would go into, let's say, a store or a clothing store or something like that, my conversation has been, and it's I'm getting even more ruthless now, is if it's not OMG, yeah. I don't buy it. I literally have to go, like, this is calling me. And then usually what I do is I leave. And then if the next day I wake up and I'm still like, yo, I gotta, I gotta go back in there. I'll go back in one more time, but do your best to sleep on it. Also, um, go paperless. Oh my gosh. Go please, paperless please on all your bills. Um, please. freaking every time they ask you, would you like a receipt? No. The answer is no. Do you guys know that receipts have, um, extremely highly carcinogenic material in them? Like, you know, the shiny paper? And the ink, it's highly carcinogenic. So if you do take receipts, I always say snap a picture of it, store it in your phone. If you need to write stuff off, do it that way. Ah, okay, we've got a question. Kristen asks, what if you, oh, it's bigger there. What if you can't shed those people married with kids, even when you know it's what you need to do? All right, great question, Chris, Kristen. I know a lot of people that are either married or they have family situations like their parents where they're like, can't really shed my parents, but clear that my parents <laughs> aren't really fitting into this new paradigm I'm operating from. Um, and when it comes down to family and blood and our commitments, we really get to ask ourselves, what am I not willing to face within myself that this person is becoming a trigger or a block for me? Because at the end of the day, it always comes down to us first. Um, we are able to grow alongside people. We don't always have to grow like this. Sometimes we grow like this. And if you can appreciate and respect your husband in particular, who may be growing like this, and if you can find the ways that your husband is inspiring you, if you can find mm -hmm. the ways that your husband is showing up powerfully, if you can find the ways that your husband is loving the crap out of you and 
teaching you, teaching you and showing you the path. And, you know, Preston and I always like to say, give it at least minimum 30 to 90 days of 100% radical, oh my God, I'm so madly in love with you type of commitment. And then if it's still not feeling right, then you know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Humans like to categorize, you know, we, we play this game uh, of this conversation around, you're either with me or you're against me. Mm -hmm. And one of the best things you could do for yourself is to see everyone as with you, to see everyone as an ally, as a partner in your growth, whether they see that or not. So with your, let's say, husband, kids, grandfather, whatever you, whoever it is in your space, if you see them from the space of, oh, they're here to teach me, they're here to teach me where I'm not willing to go. You know, I have, we've served people and one of the people I was just serving um, in, in a coaching session, it was around kids and discipline. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that this person discovered was, was that they weren't willing to discipline their children. And therefore the children were acting out in school and at home because they were so disciplined and so yeah. abused yes. as a child that they slingshotted the other way. So yes. what this can be is a teacher. Holy crap. My kids and my husband are showing up in my space as allies. They're with me to show me where I have not been willing to go within my own consciousness based on the wounds that I had as a child. Yeah. And a lot of people want to, they, they see the trigger come up for themselves. And then they look at the other person who's setting off the trigger that's already within you. And they're going, oh, you're doing this to me. Yes. Not realizing that it's just something coming up for you, from you, yes. that this other person is just a trigger for. And Shauna actually asked about soul contracts. And, you know, whether you believe in soul contracts or not, what, what we've recognized in terms of life and teaching and students all around the world, different backgrounds, same shit. We recognize that everybody is given the people and the experiences and, and the, the nastiness and the greatness and all the stuff in between so that they can grow and expand in the way that they're meant to grow and expand. Yes, it's all yes, fertilizer yes. for our seed. Yeah. All of it. Even though, you know, sometimes that fertilizer really smells like shit. And sometimes it's like, Oh, huh, that's not so bad, uh -huh. but it's all fertilizer to help us grow. And sometimes it can be um, a more challenging growth yes. than others, but it's all growth. So we get to see how it's for us. And the, the thing was just going the fertilizer thing. Um, we were, Keeping it on the pit. Yes. Uh, Beckwith <laughs> said last week uh, in Agape, he said, bloom where you were planted. Yeah. Right. And it reminded me that uh, to, to, you know, see abundance and he also said this but this is from the Upanishads you take abundance from abundance and abundance That's remains right. right so so to to see abundance right where you are because yeah. so many of us are going I need a new husband kids job and we're, we're looking over there we're watering and seeing someone else's grass yeah. instead of fertilizing our own instead of taking care of business right where we are bloom where you are planted plant seeds of love and see those people as allies in your life and the whole thing will shift yeah and you know what's really cool that just brought to mind um yes. somebody in our extreme leadership advanced level training program like two weekends ago mm -hmm. in australia um, we do this process at the end where we're releasing and we're letting go of something. And one of our amazing students, I just got goosebumps as I thought about it. Uh, one of our amazing students walked up and she had put self-doubt on her, you know what I'm about uh -huh. to share. She put self-doubt on her paper and she kissed it. And she said, I'm releasing self-doubt. She kissed it. And she said, thank you for the lessons. Yes. And she dropped it in the box and it was like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. I, hi. 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 Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Uh, he always makes fun of me because I get like, <laughs> that's my indicator that things are awesome. Like uh -huh. We have a pretty long situation. All right. Um, I let go, Jessica asks, I let go of the want and desire to be a mother three weeks ago. It has been the most difficult yet most freeing three weeks of my life. Small things really trigger me like seeing pregnant women, etc. But I just ground in my essence and take it one hour at a time. That Monday morning I woke up and this wave of captivity and confusion came over me. The process of a lesbian couple having a baby gave me the most unnatural feeling of anxiety I've ever felt. 
God didn't make a mistake when he made me gay. I want to honor his creation. That is me. And pro procreating as a gay woman just didn't feel right and honorable. He made me gay and has blessed me immeasurably with babies, humans, animals, and thyself to love infinitely. Beautiful, Jess. So Jess, that's a huge, you just took amazing. yourself through an amazing expression and experience where that could have been hell for you. Mm -hmm. That literally could have been hell for you. If you were resisting the mm -hmm. thing that underneath your soul was actually feeling mm -hmm. that expectation and attachment to like thinking that you needed to have a baby, that love needed to come from your baby. Mm -hmm. And this is for a lot of women out there. I know so many women who have trouble getting pregnant or, um, you know, can't get pregnant mm. and they feel like failures as women. Yes. And I, I am not in that space yet, but I have so much compassion for it. And I also know that sometimes we're so attached to, to love, unconditional love and family looking a very particular way yes. that we have no space. We have no space for any other type of love to show up. Sometimes that love could show up through adoption. Sometimes it shows up through a child that you mentor. Sometimes it shows up just with the love of yourself. And yes. we really get to shed ourselves of the expectations that we have in life and truly start to look for other ways for that thing to show up and to abundantly fill our space. Amazing. Yes. Um, my sister's on here. Hey, Shalee. What I love up, Shalee? Um, cult love. Yeah, somebody went to Carson. Uh, <laughs> nice. love. So this is a question and this is a good one. Oh, Michelle. What up, Michelle? Uh, can you talk about how what, why you decided to go pro, get more serious with your business six years ago, Alexi, and how you manifested that. What steps did you take? Yeah, so Michelle's part of Soul School, so uh, we are reading The War of Art, and it's talking about going pro versus the amateur. And um, we both had a few moments where we were like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to move from amateur to pro. And what was it she said, the why, what, and how? Uh, yeah, the how. None of that matters, first of all. The only, the only thing that matters is, is the why. Yeah. And, and the why, I'll speak for myself, the why for me, um, I was sick of having my calling that I knew was my soul's calling be a sideline job. I was sick of, of giving my soul's work, the thing that I was here to do, this much attention when I was giving BS work that wasn't filling my heart and my capacity of who I am, this much of my attention. And I really recognize that there can, there comes a point in everyone's life, but in particular in my life, there came a point where I recognized that I was either going to continue to turn my face to what I'm here to do and to say no to it, essentially, like, no, not yet. It's not perfect. You're not ready. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Or jump in and actually get some real life results and see what I'm actually made of and see what this thing actually consists of. and. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have a full plan, quite honestly. You know, I really didn't. But I followed. I followed the calling that was on my heart, and it led me here. And who knows where it's going to lead next? Um, and I'm open for the possibility of whatever that means. At this point, I feel like, and prior, I've always been guided. And when I finally stopped trying to guide myself and have a plan and well, it has to look like this and I have to have this type of thing and it has to be this way. The minute I let go of those expectations on it, magic happened oh. and here we are. Yes, mm -hmm. we're guided, guarded and protected yes. by the ever present circle of agape love. Uh, yes, for me, it was, um, it was a slow burn, right? So it took, took some time and like everything, <laughs> like everything. Patience. And uh, one of the best things that I cultivated and kept stepping into over and over and over again was not trying to rush and hurry up and get there mm. because there is no there out there. Nope. All of it is an inner game. All of it is about the journey and not necessarily about the destination. While the destination is a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing, but every time you land in one destination, you celebrate, you eat, you hang, and then you decide <laughs> to go for, on another journey. another journey. And so it's about the journey. And so for me, um, you know, freaking, when was that, 2012, I really started taking it a lot more serious. And But I also knew that I wasn't ready yet. Some of you guys think that you're ready and you're not. 
Mm-hmm. And then some of you guys are absolutely ready, but you're overanalyzing and trying to get it perfect and mm. you're screwing yourselves. And so it's a delicate, beautiful dance between surrendering and getting shit done. Yes. It's a beautiful dance between stepping in and going for it and also understanding that there is a time, there is a season for everything in life. And so if your season is not up right now, if your number has not been called in the way that you are used or want it to be called, You have to be patient and keep chopping wood and carrying water for the sake of chopping wood and carrying water, not to get somewhere to then finally be good enough. Yeah. So let's talk about that because a lot of people, that's a a, a phrase that's used from Buddhism. Yes. Buddhism. And a lot of people ask me, like, because they hear you say Mm. that a lot. They hear me say that. And what that means is you do the work Mm -hmm. because you have to do the work. You don't do the work to get fans. You don't do the work to get money. You don't do the work Mm -hmm. to get better. You don't do the work to get more attention. You do the work because you have to do the work. Mm. And that's the difference between the professional, the pro, and amateur. The pro is like, I do the work. I wake up every day because it's in me. It has to come out. It has to come forth. The amateur goes, I really want to. Or I'm a musician, Uh and yet you're not producing any music in the real world. I'm an actor, but yet you're not producing any acting in the real world. I'm an entrepreneur, but yet you're not executing your business in the real world. If you're literally just talking about it, you're an amateur. If you are living it, even if you're getting shitty results and failing, shitty results and failing are 99.9% better and more real and valid than talking your face off about it, yeah. period. So if you wanna move from amateur to pro, be about it, be in the world, get into action and stop just talking about it mm. and fluffing about it, get into action. And yes, it's scary, yes, it sucks sometimes, yes, it's hard work, but you do it because you have to, because it's on your soul to do. And if you don't feel that for the thing that you're setting out to do, don't do it, yeah. don't waste your time. Please don't. Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Would you speak your mind, which, wait, would you speak your mind, which will hurt others or stay quiet and be seen as the bad guy being blamed for something because the other person isn't willing to be honest and just blame it on you. Hmm. Ooh. So you're basically asking, stay quiet and be willing, like take, take the hit, take the hit of someone going, you're, you did this, Mm -hmm. you did this, or essentially fight back <laughs> and defend your position? It's a great question. I'm sure a lot of people want to know the answer to that one. Uh, it's a great question. What would you say to that, Ben? <laughs> I had to ask. I, it's because I just got done ranting for like five minutes. I'm no, sure they want to hear your voice. No, no, that ain't why. <laughs> um, Shannon said fight back. Yes, She's like, yes. So, so <laughs> Lynn, um, It doesn't have to be either or. And so this, do you speak your mind, which will hurt others? That's not a fact. That's a story. You speak your mind um, to improve on the silence. Speak your mind to be a space for someone to see themselves and pick and choose your battles carefully. Now, here's the thing especially in relationship, right? And we're in one and we're both A-type personalities. There's all kinds of spaces where the ego wants to come in and go, see, I'm right. And this is the game that happens. Oh yeah. Humans are constantly trying to be right about everything. And so human, human, right? And just because we're in the work doesn't mean that our egos don't flare up. And so when Alexi and I are having disagreements, Sometimes my ego wants to be right. Mm -hmm. And so do I speak my mind because I want to be right? Or do I speak my mind because it may be offering Alexi something that she currently cannot see? Yeah. And and it's really about... And vice versa. Yeah. It's really about like, is what I have to say or do going to add to the highest good of all involved in this situation. 
And if that answer is even slightly a no, then I wouldn't go there. Now, here's the thing. I get, personally, when you feel like somebody, <laughs> yes, Michelle, we fight. We for sure fight. Like, we are real humans. And we fight. Um, I personally hate feeling blamed for something that I'm like, I know I didn't do that. What the hell? I know I didn't do that. I hate that feeling because it's like you want to, like, justify yourself and you want the person to know like I'm a good person like how do you not know that I didn't do this and da, 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 da. there's all these little things that you're like I just want to defend myself but the minute you go to defend yourself there's a defense and an offense that's called a war literally defense offense defense creates offense offense creates defense the minute you have offense or defense you have a war so it's up to you if you want to go down that path you absolutely can or you can live the example and be the embodiment of what's missing in the situation. <laughs> what's missing in the situation is always starting here first. You think it's from the other person and you're waiting for them to come to you with what's missing. Oh, I'm just waiting for them to apologize. Whatever you deem is missing in, the, in that certain situation in the relationship, in that moment, bring that to the table first. You be the leader in that way. And that's called embodiment. Does it always work? And no, <laughs> no. But at least you know you're coming from love and at least you know that you're, you're trying a different angle that's for the highest and best use and good of all involved. <laughs> And you should sell tickets to your argument. You should. You guys would, you would definitely have a good you time. You would laugh. You would, you'd be like, whoa. Here's the thing. It's, it's psychological warfare with us. <laughs> because we know a lot. We know a lot of stuff. We don't really know anything. But mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of information in our brains. And um, when we fight and our egos are involved, we're like, oh, yeah, this piece of information. This piece of information. Yeah. <laughs> Psychological warfare. Yes. Um, so uh, <laughs> there is a question. <laughs> are you going to answer that? <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to get to that. So <laughs> the question I would have for you, Lynn, is, is this a pattern? And is what has you not speaking up coming from a wound, a people-pleasing wound? A wound that has you afraid of things, of conflict being in the space. Because if that's the case, I would say, hell yes. Step in. See what happens. Mm -hmm. Because you, remember, we're always teaching people how to be with us. And so, yes, some things, some things are better uh, left unsaid. Some things, you know, you can sort of sidestep your ego and keep going. Because all it is is just you wanting to be right. All it is is me wanting to be right. I'll speak about me. Yeah. When we fight, which we do, not all the time, but we do. Alexi is a hardcore Virgo. I am a hardcore Leo. And if you look those two signs up together, you're going to see that it's either pure magic or it's fucking war. Or and completely <laughs> incompatible. <laughs> and so both of us, and it's just not that, both of us were raised by somebody. Both of us have been um, leaders in our own rights. And, and so there's all kinds of stuff that comes. Relationships can be so subtle and they're so interesting. And they're so perfect. A, it's all perfect and exactly what we need um, to, to um, grow. To yeah. grow, because if you're not growing, you're dying. And so- And back to soul contracts. Yes. You got exactly who you needed to get Every to time. heal your bullshit from the past. Every My time. bullshit. I got exactly who I needed to get. Ta -da! You, baby. Thank you. To heal my bullshit from the past. And he got the same. And and we we truly, like we truly are that for each other. Like we came in each other's lives to expand and elevate each other and yes. and complement each other in the most magical ways and to come together to build a bridge for the work that we're doing. And in order to do the work that we're doing, that we are here to do, that we came here together to do, mm -hmm. we must heal the parts of our past, of yeah. our ego, of our identity yeah. that are still keeping us small and still holding us back in this contained version of our infinite selves. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, Anything else you want to talk about on that? Devin had a question. You okay. gonna answer Nary's question? What is? What's the question? What was our biggest fight? What would you say? I'm actually curious about that. I don't know. I, well, was, oh, I know what it is. Yeah. I know what it is. What do you think? I think it's the fight that we had in Melbourne. 
Yeah. I think that was our big, what was that? Oh. Yeah, that was the biggest fight. Yeah. That was um, our biggest fight. It was in Melbourne just a few months ago? Yeah. Um, or maybe we had a bigger one early. Yes. We, we did. Um, what's up, Cam? Um, we definitely, I mean. Yeah, Cam. <laughs> we are both pretty gangster. So, um, yeah. and <laughs> it's perfect. And mm-hmm. it's exactly what we need. And both of us are all in. Um, and stuff comes up. And so we be with what comes up. Um, personally, yes, 100% responsibility. And, you know, what's, what's here for us? We are a unit. We are attached. Mm-hmm. We are in this together. So let's just take San Diego, for example. I've disliked San Diego since birth. And <laughs> <laughs> that's not a blueprint. <laughs> We are here um, because we both want to be here, but Alexi particularly wanted to come here. And so for me, looking at that and going, oh, yeah, well, fuck. I mean, not fuck. Let me not. Let me stop cursing. I wanted to be in Venice. And Alexi compromised mm-hmm. because I wanted to be there. And so that's what happens in relationships. And so all of it's here to teach you and all of that good stuff. And, yes, our biggest fight was in Melbourne. I would say, well, we had a big one in Tanzania, Cam, because Cam was there. It, was he? Yeah, I think Cam was there for that one. What's that? What was it about? Or was that? No, that was the year before. Or to Neil. Yeah. That was the year before. To Neil was there. Yes. yes to Neil was there. And yeah. our fights tend to be always about the same thing, two things. Stupid stuff. Um, and it's great. <laughs> and it's, it's TV. Um, so Devin said, can you talk about spiritual bypassing? Oh, yes. Let's talk about spiritual bypassing. Okay. Spiritual bypassing is when, and which Devin is it? Devin Workhouse. Oh, what up, Devin? That's why I asked. Um, Spiritual bypassing is when you have all this amazing information in your brain about positivity and like focusing on certain things because what you focus on expands and, um, you know, leaning more towards what's working in your life versus what's not working in your life and mm-hmm. mindset and all this stuff. And you've got all this information that is effective and useful in certain scenarios. But then life happens and you go, oh, what I focus on expands. Okay. I, do, I can't, fo- this never happened. <laughs> and you're like this and inside you're dying. You're like crying on the inside. You're in pain. You're, you're frustrated. All your old shit is coming up. All your old stuff is just surfacing to the top. And yet you're like, everything's fine. Today is beautiful. (laughs) Everything's great. What you focus on expands. And you literally are pretending as if life is not happening. And there's so much we can talk about when it comes to spiritual bypassing because it's this idea that life is supposed to be perfect, that life is supposed to be all good all the time. Guys, life is life. Life is life. And just like thunderstorms come and violent hurricanes and cyclones and tornadoes sunny days come and that's life like when did we ever think that life was just supposed to be perfect and easy and good and sunny and rainbows and all that stuff life is all of it and when we bypass half of life we open ourselves up for only half of life which means you're missing half the experience And here's what people don't get too. It's like when you do the work, when you're in this personal development work and you're like really building your awareness of yourself, you start to realize, holy crap, there's Mm -hmm. a lot of work that gets to be done here. And you also recognize that all that is just stories. All of that is just programming. All of that is just ineffective patterns. And there's always work to do. And The thing with that is people really then go, well, I might as well not even do the work. Mm -hmm. Like ignorance is bliss. But is it? Is it really? Mm -hmm. Because in order to experience the highest highs of life, the highest joys, the highest passion, the highest excitement, the highest energy that life has to offer, you have to be open for the lowest lows. Period. Period. You can't expect the range of this emotion Without the depth of this, it won't hold it. So you have to be available for all of it. If you're only available for like good, your life's gonna be like fine. For your fine. Everything's fine. Fine <laughs> is like a death word. Everything's fine. Yeah. It's not fine. 
And if you want life to just be fine all the time, you're never go you're going to feel like, is this all there is? Is this all there is? And I don't know about you, but like, I, I feel like I've experienced more joy and more passion and more excitement and more energy than I ever have in my life. Mm -hmm. And I've also experienced mm -hmm. <laughs> more pain and more like frustration. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's spiritual bypassing, you know, in its, let's say infancy in its most simplest, simplistic terms is just trying to be positive all the time. And uh, that can be a drug for a lot of people as yes. well. And it's not, um, not something I'd like to uh, endorse. It is definitely something that I have, uh, a lot of people when they first start out because they get sort of misinformation mm -hmm. and you know, we're teaching like the secret was fantastic. And the secret also um, left out a lot. You know, it was like elementary school when there was a PhD program available. And so a lot of people just saw, oh, all I have to do is be positive and the law of attraction will make sure that my life is perfect all the damn time. Yeah. Like that thing is actually screwing so many of us up. Um, and so I, I, this spiritual vibe has, I'm, I'm, I'm even grateful that it's actually a word that people talk about these days. Um, and I think more of the community humans are understanding that life is the profane and the profound, the bitter and the sweet. It is all of it. It is the magic. It is the dance. And you know, just because the song changes and it's a song you don't necessarily like, doesn't mean you can't dance. Doesn't mean you shouldn't dance. The DJ God, God is the DJ, mm -hmm. right? But we, we, we press the buttons with God. Mm. Yes. I love that. We have so many good questions here, babe. Hit one. My question over awesome load. Okay, it's a good one. Linda, what up, Linda? Is it normal to get overwhelmed doing affirmations and meditations and visualizations? Doing it too much maybe throughout the day. <laughs> um, it depends. Because here's the thing. In order to reprogram old patterns, you do have to either visually reprogram, you have to auditorily reprogram, or you have to experientially reprogram. Those are the three ways that we reprogram our blueprint. Yeah. So if, if you're doing those things and they're working for you, like if you've been doing them for like three months and you're seeing a difference, great. It's like an exercise regimen. Keep it up, but don't become so attached to that being the way. Like the biggest thing I notice in my work with other people is that they keep sucking in information and doing these things, but they're doing the things to get a result. Yes. Like, oh, I have to do these affirmations because I want to be a millionaire. Or I, I need to do these visualizations because I need to attract the partner. Or, oh, I need to meditate because it's good for my health. What feels aligned for your soul? Yeah. And then do it because it feels aligned for your soul. Yes. Like, <laughs> that's, that's my big thing. It's like, what's the intention behind it? Yes. Because if it's for something, you'll never actually feel, you'll never get the result that you're really after if it's for this result that's out there. If it's for results in here, the inner world, then you can actually achieve that. So yes. that's something I would check in with. Here's the thing also. A lot of people do affirmations and things of that nature because they hear other people say that that's what you're supposed to do. So play, try things on. If they don't feel good, if, if it doesn't like, you know, you asked, is it too much? So nine out of 10 it is. <laughs> well, unless she's comparing herself to somebody else who's, or somebody's in her life going, that's too much, that's crazy. Yeah. Which true. people have told me that before, but I'm like, yeah, this shit works. Yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. I'm keep doing it. For sure. The thing is, I just find that so many people will say, I'm doing my affirmations and I'm doing my gratitude journal because so-and-so told me that you do that in order to get blank, 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 blank. And like, um, you know, for instance, I was a hardcore meditator uh, for a couple of years, like hardcore, twice a day, every day. Now I've, I went away from it and now I'm back to it and I'm doing 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. That's what works for me. But I could beat myself up and say, well, I'm not doing 20 minutes of every, a day. I'm not doing exactly how the transcendental meditation community would say I should be doing it. And that yeah. is hell. That is how you suffering. punish yourself. That's suffering based on someone else's standard of what meditation is. And so I get to decide what it looks like for me. And yeah. you get to decide what it looks like for you. Yeah. And, and that, like, 
actually Alex tripod what up Alex uh, Alex asked about our morning rituals mm -hmm. and this is a great kind of segue into that because I think a lot of people are looking for like a formula mm -hmm. they want like all right tell me the formula tell me the answer like, what exactly do you guys do and I did this too like I totally did this I was studying all the masters and like okay what do the masters do if I do what the masters do so I'll get the same calling me song. a master is that what you calling me because every master was one said it's us <laughs> that is a high note that you just did. <laughs> but I say this because, yes, I have practices I do in the morning, but do I do them every morning? No. Um, because I find for myself what works for me is I like to actually do things with feeling, with soul. Like, I like to be there. I don't like to just do it because I have to do it and it's on the thing that I have to do. Uh, so meditation for me does not look like meditation for anybody else. Meditation for me is my showers. How long are my showers? Yeah, she's made California go into a drought, <laughs> essentially. I am very conservative in other areas of the environment <laughs> so that I can have my long shower showers, time. Yes. <laughs> because showers for me are a form of meditation. And I do nothing in there but listen to the sound of the water against my skin. That's meditation to me. Walking on the beach, meditation. Sitting under a tree, meditation. meditation. Going for a hike, meditation. Um, sometimes it's like watching animals, oh, meditation. Like that's like joy meditation. Yeah. So it doesn't have to look how it traditionally looks. And you really want to check in. If you're just doing it out of habit because it's like a thing you have to do, don't do it or do it from a place that you actually feel it. Because gratitude journals and uh, meditation and all the benefits that they talk about that these things have are only if you actually feel it. <laughs> like, yes, and if, you, if you're coming from, yeah, exactly, feel it. If you're coming like, from the space of like this, I actually feel gratitude uh, as opposed to this clinical sort of I wrote gratitude down. Yeah, like, oh, uh, I'm breathing today. Uh, my heart's beating. Uh, I got eight hours of sleep versus like, I'm breathing today. Oh my gosh, feel my heartbeat. Wow. Alive. Oh my gosh, yes, I made are. it another day. Like that type of gratitude. If you're feeling that, that's the vibration that will attract more in your life. And the law of attraction, the secret that what they're talking about is actual, uh, it's an actual frequency. So if you're just writing gratitudes down, like, or affirmations, I am a millionaire, and you're not like seeing it and feeling it and experiencing it, and like, I am abundant, like, I am abundance. Yes. Period. If you're not feeling that, you're not the vibration of it. You're the vibration of chore, yes. of habit, of have to. And guess what? You'll attract more of have to, chore, habit in your life versus elevation. You cannot have what you want, but you may experience what you have. Yeah. Rasta. Rasta. All right. <laughs> Shanina, what up, girl? Uh, how do you know when or how to move on? Like, what's a good distinction to know you're stuck in a toxic place because you still got shit to learn or you're there because you learned the lesson but now made it your comfort zone and are sliding back? Oh, good question, Mama. Great question. question. I'm sure there's lots of people being with this. Yes. How do you know when slash how to move on? Mm -hmm. Like, when are you stuck? Where it's like, okay, I'm here because I have lessons to learn. Yes. Or like, no, I'm here because I'm comfortable and I don't feel like moving past and I don't feel like changing up the game. Or and I'm don't. afraid to move on right. because <gasps> I don't want to be single. Oh. I don't know what's going to happen if I do. Yes. So uh, it always comes back to, for us, try it on. Mm -hmm. Try it on internally. Don't tell anybody. Just try Except it on. all of us on Facebook. Like, yes. Just us. Try it on <laughs> in your mind for three days. Just say, okay, for the next three days, I'm playing with the idea, like really sitting in the idea that this is, it's time to move on. Yeah. It's time for me to leave this corporate nine to five and go venture out. Into, da, 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 da. It's time for me to leave this relationship where I've been, uh, you know, being uh, passive aggressively abused mentally and emotionally, et cetera, et cetera. You'll know, try it on. And, if, and if you, if it feels, because our, our feelings can be an indicator. They can be a GPS um, if we're really tuned in, right? There's three centers of intelligence, the mind, the heart, the gut. If the heart and the gut separate from 
the, the, the thinking mind, right? The conscious mind, the one mind, right? If from separate from those, if you say, we're, I'm leaving and the, and the heart and the gut go, relief. And then the head goes, but, but you don't have, but, but scarcity. Yes. Listen to the other two. Mm-hmm. Cause there's two of them and one of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Cam bam. Yeah. What up Cam? Uh, can you please talk on your effective and ineffective experiences based on internal versus external results? Internal versus external results. Um, all results are internal. That's what's coming through for me right now. Like external. So here's here's what I recognize. I was somebody who based a lot of my life yes. on external results. Like, can I get external results? Hell to the yeah. Like, I can produce results in any domain. One of my gifts is I have the belief that I can achieve anything in any domain, just point me to Google and I will figure it out. And none of that shit matters. Mm -mm. Um, And I chased the external result for a really long time because I thought that the answer was there. Like, okay, if I just keep stacking external results, more money, more success, more accolades, more talent, more skill, more knowledge, more products, more this, more that. If I keep stacking that, then... I'll fill the gap. I'll fill the void. But until I hit the internal result called perfect, whole, and complete, but not finished, meaning let me peel away the layers of illusion that have been keeping me from my true authentic self, my infinite nature, my explosive and expansive universe being here in human form. Let me peel back those layers and get to work on the internal result called alignment with source. That's where I feel whole and complete. That's where I feel and actually tap into my magic. And, you know, I use the word magic quite a bit. And I don't mean it in the sense of like magic, look at my cards or my coin or whatever. I mean it in the sense of like this ethereal thing that you, there's no other word for it because it's, there's no answer to it. There's no how, there's no explanation. Grace, synchronicity. Grace, synchronicity, spontaneous um, goodness. Spontaneous goodness. It's a thing that just happens because it happens because it happens. You know, and it's like that's magic to me. It's like this this unexplainable thing. And and my internal result of magic, of truly feeling successful and abundant because I'm tapped into my own magic. Um, that's the only result I want in life. That feels good for me. What would you say? For me, um, one of the most effective ways of being that I choose on a daily basis is play. Mm -hmm. Because from play, creativity is spawned. From play, uh, my heart shines and smiles. From play, uh, I create space for uh, external results to show up because I'm not living from scarcity. You, it, it, it's almost impossible, nearly impossible to be in scarcity and playing at the same time, truly playing, truly being in, in that, uh, that, that space where you're having a blast, right? So play, for sure, one of my most effective uh, ways of being. One of my most ineffective ways of being is listening to the, the, the wounded self, the ego mind. Mm-hmm. When I listen to that self, when I listen to the collective consciousness and the sum total of the experiences I've had up until this point, like even around San Diego, right? So here, let me let you guys in on a little something that I discovered. I haven't told Alexi yet. Um, there's a part of me, <laughs> I just discovered it today. <laughs> you see, I already got in trouble. I'm like, well, what? We're about to fight after this. Oh, um, <laughs> so... Um, one of the things I discovered today while I was surfing in San Diego was that a part of me feels like living here is selling out. And that's the, that's the wounded self. The, the, the truth of me knows that wherever humans are, that is where my work is. Mm-hmm. And I can because the, the, the thought process is, that, oh, I'll move to San Diego where it's predominantly Caucasian and safe and vanilla and from there i'll lose my edge i'll forget how to be with the human experience right which is not true it's not true at all it's not a capital t truth that's a lowercase t and that's me believing the wounded mind Mm -hmm. and so the game 
is to go, ah, I see you. And is this true with a capital T? Is this a fact or is this just some stuff I made up based on all of the past experiences? And so that's one of the most ineffective things. Mm -hmm. um, Alex asked a similar question. How do you guys get in state? Um, not by using external things, but for internal things. Um, I get in state like so many different ways. I would say dance for me is a huge one. Yes. Like I, I create a static states of ecstasy without any supplements or I'll be on Molly all day <laughs> or uh, <laughs> drugs or alcohol or anything just by moving and dancing. Yes. And like, tell them about the bridge or I mean, well, we can't tell them about the bridge, but yeah, well, we just went in. Well, yeah. So we do, we do a form of a static dance that we have cultivated um, through pulling from different uh, practices that have been around for ages because dance is a way that people um, access God in many religious and um, esoteric traditions. And so we took a varied group of those esoteric traditions and created our own form of a static dance where we joined in, mm -hmm. even though we were facilitating it. Yep. And at the end, I was at this last process and I was so just in my own space. We're in a room of 80 people and yes. I'm literally in my own world. Nobody else is even in there. And I'm moving my hands and I'm seeing with my eyes closed, I'm building sacred geometry with my hands and I'm moving it around. And I'm, That is like I was on LSD. I was not on LSD. I was on some dance. How do you know what LSD is like? <laughs> well, I've tried it before. <laughs> so for those of you guys <laughs> curious about that spell, right? Um, yes. The bridge experience, which is a two day somatic experiential workshop that we teach and facilitate. Um, for those of you guys, wait. Oh, wait. Uh, keep talking. I'll figure this out. Uh, for those of you guys interested in working with us, we are doing one June 10th in Los Angeles. We haven't even announced it yet on our Facebook page. Anything, but June 10th, if you go to. 10th and 11th. 10th and 11th. If you go to bridgeexperience.com, uh, if you can get to LA, I highly suggest that this is a groundbreaking, um, extremely confronting, beautiful process that we have uh, formulated in our 20 plus years of doing this work together. Yes. Uh, combined 20 plus years of, of the, the greatest stuff from all of these different pieces, right? So we're taking uh, somatic, which is the wisdom of the body. We're taking NLP. We're taking gestalt. We're taking... We're taking different theories of chaos theory and trauma therapy. Uh, we've literally, I mean, that's why we call it the bridge. We have bridged um, probably about 15 to 20 different modalities to create our own methodology called the bridge that bridges science, spirituality, human potential, mind, body, soul, spirit, quantum, um, and really, really gives a new experience of seeing who you are in a different way. So um, a lot of, we've done all person, not all of it, but we've done a lot of, <laughs> like most of the personal development available in the world because we're nerds for this stuff. And yes, it's absolutely different from the bridge method. Yes. It's absolutely different than soul school. It's different than the stretch 22. It's, it's experiential learning. Anything we've yeah. ever put into the world. It is a beast. Yes. There are some distinctions that are similar, but wh where we go with this and what you get to experience out of it, game changer. Yeah. So come to Toronto, please. Shelly said mind blowing. What up shells? I saw Renee on here too. What up Renee? Uh, Maxine asked a question. Can you please elaborate more on loved ones? I'm going to read it here. Loved ones who trigger us and how to show we care without reacting to their trigger. I feel like I'm growing apart from my partner of over six years because it got so toxic. Yeah. If we ignore the trigger or disregard it, are we avoiding to do the inner work? Or are we just over it after so long? Great question, Maxine. Um, yes. so, so it got to this point for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And you first get to look at those reasons. Yes. That you played. Yes. Not your partner. It's his fault. That you played. We're screwed because of him. How did it get to a toxic place because of you? And if you can really look at, whoa, I caused this, I allowed this, I perpetuated this, 
I ignored this. I said this. I played the victim here. I blamed here. Oh. I left no space for this. Oh, oh. And and so therefore, I created an environment that I now call toxic. Mm -hmm. So if you can look at that first, that's going to be like so healing for you to put all the responsibility here first. Yes. And we don't blame ourselves. It's not about blame. Yes, it's not beating yourself up. It's about like being honest and going, okay, I've definitely created this situation along with my partner. And let me take responsibility for how and what I've created. So start there first. And then you get to look at, because you're saying, how do we, how do we show that we care without reacting to their trigger? Mm. That for me is, is an easier part. I say easy. It's not easy to do in the moment. Like in the moment you want to like yell back and say that you're right and they're wrong and all that stuff. <laughs> um, but in the moment, that's, that's the easy part. The easy part is not saying, Hey, I, I, we need to fix this right now. Not saying, Hey, this is the answer, but just going, I'm sorry. I love you. Mm -hmm. Alexi did that recently. I did. It's beautiful. And it's like, I'm sorry that I'm showing up in a way that is ineffective. Even though if you don't know how you're showing up, even if you think you're showing up perfect, I'm sorry if I'm showing up in a way that's not working. Clearly this isn't working. I'm sorry. I love you. I don't want to fight. Maybe we can talk about this in a little bit, but I just want you to know I love you. Boom. You just show that you care without like that literally like, dissipates the trigger it dissipates the fight because if you go to someone and you're like Meh, i love you mm -hmm. they're like melt even if they're like pissed off they're like melt yeah pissed off melt <laughs> you know and it's it just kind of like dissolves it soothes it's like lotion yes. on ashy skin <laughs> you can see that on mine um <laughs> so also let me add this um not everything needs to be excavated es is that the word? Excavated. Es like excavated. Yeah, it doesn't need, and not everything needs to be digged. Processed. Yes. So sometimes one of the best things you could do for your relationship is go, okay, this is where we are. And this is what I'm, um, what's the word? This is what I am committed to experiencing in our relationship. So this is where we are. Six years of some toxic bullshit that we both created. Ooh. Oh, and we're here we are now. Yeah. This we're is here. what is. And instead of me, uh, cause this is the, this is the thing that gets people in trouble, myself included, when I'm listening to the BS is, um, we go, we start thinking about the past. Mm -hmm. And then from the past, we start projecting into the future. And from thinking about the past, we bring it into the now. And so is that happening now? Yes. Is, is it toxic at this very moment? Absolutely not. Maybe not. Probably not. But it is because you're you focusing on it and saying it and said it. Bring it in it into the space. So one of the best things you could do is go, okay, that's what was. Mm -hmm. This is what is perfect, whole and complete. Awesome. All needs met right now. Still love this person. Yeah. And if this person got sick today, I would be by their side in a minute. Mm -hmm. Still love this beautiful being. We're just trying to figure it out. None of us got a manual on how to do relationships. Oh crap. My mom and her mom and his dad and her dad and all of that, all of them, none of them got a manual. Mm -hmm. And so we're just playing out these wounds and trying to be right and fighting. So I'm done with that. Now from this place, from this place, I'm going to soften my heart and celebrate my husband every single day for the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. I'm going to celebrate him. I'm going to celebrate our relationship. I'm going to see how much, how much I can put in my own damn cup such that I give from the overflow and that I, I am experiencing so much damn joy that he goes, what are you on and how can I get some? Mm. And you do it not expecting him to go, what are you on? How do I get some? Oh yes. my gosh, you're amazing. You do it because you want to see how much love you're capable of giving. And here's the thing that <laughs> screws most people up. Most people are giving with expectation, like lace right under there. You're oh. like, here's my present. And there's my expectation. <laughs> like, <laughs> where's my present back? <laughs> are you going to say you're sorry? I just said I'm sorry. Are you saying you're sorry? Because I'm waiting for that. Uh -huh. Oh, I just said I love you. I just tried to diffuse the situation. Where's my celebration? Yeah. Are you going to acknowledge me? Oh, now you're not going to acknowledge what I just did? Well, that's messed up. I just take back what I yeah, did. So now I'm mad again. <laughs> now I'm mad again. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing, this happens to me quite often. I find myself doing the thing I know I need to do, doing the thing I know my soul needs to do. Like, I'm going to do the thing. 
I'm going to just align and be love right now. I'm myself doing the love thing. And then like, I find like the, Ooh, little disappointment. Cause I didn't get what I expected. Mm-hmm. That's like, that wasn't a true gift. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a true gift if I was expecting something underneath. So mm-hmm. it's really important to, to, to ask yourself, am I willing to give love just to see how much love I'm capable of giving in this moment? And that should be the practice of your humanness. Like that should be your practice. Mm. Like, am I willing to give love in this moment just for the sake of seeing how much love I'm capable of giving when I don't freaking feel like it? Mm-hmm. That's the that's the game. That's the game in relationship, in finances, in health, mm-hmm. in wisdom, in career, in friends, in family. That's the game. Yeah. That's the game. Yes. Rastafari. Rastafari. Um. All right. I saw a question that I was on, and then you moved it. Mm, my bad. Moved it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, maybe I'll find it again. We have a lot of great questions on here, guys. If we're not answering your question, we are sorry. We love you. Doesn't mean that we don't love your question. It just means that sometimes we don't see it. We have a lot of great questions coming through. Yeah. Um, David, where are you? I saw your question. That's what I'm looking for. Alicia, what up, girl? Um, she asked why we're being homeless. We're choosing homelessness because we were sick of all of our stuff and we wanted to. Um, we're being minimalist. We wanted to see what it felt like to not be owned by our things and to truly um, be the in ownership of our experience of life. Yes, we're downgrading our things to upgrade our experience. Sis. Exactly. Um, David, I'm looking for your question, but I don't know if, oh, yes, found you. Rasta. Okay. David asks, how do you keep from making one person the source of all your happiness and sadness? The reason I love this question is because so many people, David, thank you for having the gusto to ask this question because that people are like, I don't do that. Uh, Yes, you do. (laughs) Stop it. Yes, you do. And I appreciate David being honest and real and raw with this question because so many people make money the source of happiness and sadness, a partner, the source of happiness or sadness, their um, home situation, a source of their happiness or sadness. You can replace one person with a thousand different things, their weight, their looks, their this, their that, their status, their success in business, their finances. People make this something out there, fill in the blank, whatever it is for you, Mm -hmm. the source of all your happiness and sadness because You are not willing to face off with the fact that you are your source of happiness and sadness. Mm -hmm. So you keep putting it out there as a deflection and as a distraction in hopes that if if you keep looking out there, you won't have to go in here. (laughs) In here can be scary. It's dark. It's scary sometimes. But the minute you go inside, yes, it takes a lot of work. Yes, it takes a deep commitment. But the minute you go inside and you truly tap into what's happening in here, knowing that you are the problem and the solution, knowing that you are the creator of all happiness, you are the creator of all sadness, you are the creator of all experiences that you call life. The minute you actually tap into that truth, Mm. you actually get that you are the creator of all experiences of life. And that's wildly huge and free and can also feel like a huge responsibility for a lot of people. Cause then they look at their life and they go, Oh man, that means I created that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Yeah. So how do you keep from making something out there? The source of all your happiness, you go inside, you go inside. It's a decision. It's, it's a decision to actually, they call it awakening because it's like the inner eye wakes up and you see in here this is a world and the minute you can start to see this world in here you can start to see how this internal world is creating the external world you get that it's all a reflection of us Mm. all of it lynn said i wish someday i find that someone that someone to do all of this celebration with dot 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 joy but seems an impossible future so um lynn and so it is. Mm-hmm. You are always co-creating with the creator. And um, 
I would challenge you, Lynn, to see where in else in your life you are holding on to this victim mentality that would have you uh, view yourself, your God, and the universe in such a way. Because you're a miracle. A miracle. There is not another land on this entire planet that carries the medicine and the power and the beauty and the laughter that you do. And so for me and for us, this idea that, that the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, just stopped after your last boyfriend is such BS. Mm. And the universe just says yes. All the time. It's impartial. All the time. Gives no fucks. No. It says, sure, Lynn. Okay. That's what you want? You want to wallow in your sadness? And so it is. Mm -hmm. And also, would you like to, uh, I mean, and here's the, here's the, the um, unintended consequence of wallowing in sadness, Lynn and every single other person listening to this, because we all do this. Yes. The unintended consequence of wallowing in victim consciousness around love or anything else is the brain sends messages to the body mm -hmm. through neuropeptides that create dis-ease in the body. And so one may look up four years, five years, 10 years from now and go, why do I have a uh, chronic blank? Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at the thought patterns and the things that you're holding on to, you may see that that is what has created the dis-ease in your body. And so if you created it, you can also uncreate it. Yes. I had a heart palpitation and was told I would take medicine for the rest of my life. And I have not done so in years because I understood this principle. I created it through stress, through holding on to terrible things over and over and over again. Um, and, and so I just let those things go. I started playing more and stepping into that part of my life. Yeah, Darius mentioned uh, Donnie Epstein, who's a friend of ours, who's amazing. Uh, check out his book, The 12 Stages of Healing. You can also look up um, you, are, you Are the Placebo. Yeah. Is yeah. that the right one? I always yes. mix them up. Yes, You Are the Placebo. It's not Donnie didn't write that? No, yes. no, no. Donnie wrote 12 Stages of Healing. You Are the Placebo is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Book that thick, but amazing. Um, dun da 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 uh, Wayne asked, where are we going to be living? All over the place. San Diego first, and then we're going to try Topanga Canyon for a little mm -hmm. bit. Then we're going to head to Hawaii, to Europe, to we're Africa. We're going to Italy for a little bit. But that's woods. just for, Yeah, we're just going to be everywhere. Everywhere. Um, by the way, guys, if this is inspiring you, you make sure you share this the moment this is over and explain why you're sharing it to your friends and family. We think that... We're pretty awesome and that the stuff we're sharing is coming from uh, a beautiful place and that most people aren't being taught these things. So please share it if you think or have had an experience of being inspired today. Yes. Uh, Karen asks, hello, Karen. My mind goes to the worst case scenario when yes. I worry. Yes. How do I challenge them when it feels like they're, when, when it, they, when it feels like they feel intrusive? Yes. Um, so worry is attached to fear. And worry exists in the future. And worry is, Preston and I, in our work, we teach that you get to acknowledge what's coming up for you, especially if it's something from the past. Because in the past, something happened. Something occurred. You made a story about it. You tucked the story away. That story becomes um, a space taker upper in your body. <laughs> taker upper. For lack of a better word, yes. I sound like a five-year-old. Yes. A space taker upper in your body. And so... Instead of ignoring the pain and pretending like it's not there and spiritually bypassing, we say, acknowledge it, bring it forward. Look at it. Worry, worry hasn't happened yet. <laughs> worry is about a future that doesn't exist yet. Worry is what if. What if isn't real. Mm -hmm. So for us, and I, I get it, mama, like worry used to be my jam. Me and worry used to be best friends. Mm -hmm. So... For me, anytime I get in a space of worry, like, oh my gosh, is this going to be this? What's going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. I go, ah, what's here now? What's here now? Okay, right now, 
I'm, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Great. What gets to be here right now so that the worry gets smaller? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'm worried that I'm not going to be prepared. I'm worried I'm going to mess something up. Okay, so how can I prepare in this moment so that I feel fully capable of doing this thing that hasn't happened yet? So we say honor and acknowledge the things that have happened in the past that you're storing in your body as emotional trauma. Do not honor and acknowledge worry because it's not fucking real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, she nailed it. I, I would add to that um, that one of the so first of all, we all have two million year old brains, and they worry and fear in worst case scenarios has kept our species alive for a long time. Um, and it's not as necessary now in these times. So you get to train, retrain your brain, yeah. and how do you retrain your brain? It's, 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 um, the collective mind and all the BS stories and all that stuff, it shows up in your space. And what most people do is when it shows up in their space, they go, why are you here? What are you, why, why is it here? Oh, where are you? It's terrible. Oh, it's chasing me. Right. Um, But if it showed up in your space and you went, I see you and I love you and I'm focused. Mm -hmm. Right. Then what happens is, is you retrain the brain. The brain goes or the, collective mind goes, oh, sh- Karen's not going to pay attention to these thoughts anymore. So we're going to send her different ones. But if you pay attention to them and you give them energy, then it's like giving them gas and they can drive across country on that gas. So the biggest thing is just when they pop up, notice them, send them love and redirect your energy to what it is you would like to experience in that very moment. You do that over and over and over again until it becomes a new normal and then you become the embodiment of what it is that you declare. Stop all right. That means when the dose moves. <laughs> it's like a Madonna move. <laughs> Charles, what up, Charles? Yeah. How do, are you guys still seeing our little comments when we pull them up on the screen? And the question's coming up on the screen. Oh, you closed your computer. Because yeah. on our preview, we don't see it, but on this thing, it's probably we see it. this thing. I think we can hit that off. Oh, uh, can I? Yeah. Type in yes. Oh. Okay. Well, and then hit agenda, hit agenda. Oh. Just what? hit agenda. Oh. Okay. There we go. Are you guys seeing the comments? Yes. Okay, great. Charles, what up, Charles? How do I break away from my adoptive parents when they are not serving my life anymore on my level of awareness of the world? Now I am woke. Mm. Ooh, so we got a lot to say about this. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, First things first, my husband's hair is really long. Uh You can't really see it, but it's very long. Um, Second thing, Charles, um, they are serving your life. How do we know? Because they're here. And again, this is this whole point of resistance. When we're resisting what's actually here, we're causing ourselves suffering. Why are they like this? Mm-hmm. They're not on my level. This isn't da 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 da. Mm-hmm. And that might all be true to the identity called woke and awakened, right? Yeah. Um, and I understand this because I, I had that experience with certain people in my life as well. And I got to shift my understanding of how they're actually more awake than I am, how they're actually teaching me, how they're actually serving my expansion, Mm. how them showing up just as who they are Mm. without changing anything about them is giving myself a beautiful space, a beautiful canvas to reflect on what it is that I want to create, what it is that I don't want to create, who it is that I'm stepping into, who it is I am not stepping into. So they are still serving your life. It's just a matter of how you're choosing to see serve in your life. What would you add to that? Yeah, and I think this should be the last question we've been on for quite a while now. Oh, yeah. Um, Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Yeah, we love you guys so much. We appreciate we, that. Really. And if you guys see us on the streets, especially in the streets of Encinitas, come hug us. the streets we love of Encinitas. Uh, yes. <laughs> don't do that. I don't know that song. The streets of Philadelphia. Oh, and then you made it Encinitas. Okay, this is just this is stuff I didn't listen to as a child. That was great. That was a great reference. I have no clue what that is. Um... So, Amazing reference. Charles, <laughs> I think that some people um, prematurely believe that they are woke. Um, if you would have asked me. Oh, my God. I was just going to say that. If you would have asked me. About you, not about me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> about me, too. That's what I was thinking about. Ten years ago. I thought I was so awakened. Was I awoke? I would have said, hell Yes. And, and because I was so awoke or awake, or whatever the case may be, I was trying to go and convert everybody to juicing and being vegetarians and to leaving uh, our religion, which was Christianity. 
that was not awake. <laughs> I had been, imagine, you know, being asleep and someone just coming over. Just, I, I was like this, like that. Not like, oh, I'm awake. I was like, oh, is something happening? Right? <laughs> What's happening? And so um, if you are needing to separate yourself from your parents, then nine out of 10, you still have some work to do because they're triggering you in such a way that your awokenness, awake, awakened state is wants to go back to sleep. Is sleeping. Yes. <laughs> this is something we say all the time too. Like you think you got it figured out, go spend a weekend with your parents. Uh -huh. Just go spend a weekend with your parents uh -huh. or with your family or like that family member that you're like, they trigger the hell out of me. Yeah. You think you got it figured out, get into a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> like, Always a work in progress. Always, always, always. Even the masters, like the true masters that we know, the people that we look up to and respect and like, um, they model the work. Um, they get that there is always work to do and they are truly transparent about that. And that's something for me that was a huge breakthrough, I think, yeah. is recognizing that, like I used to think that the masters had it all figured out and like they were perfect. And okay, if I can get to perfect, if I can get to a state called I've got it all figured out, mm -hmm. then I'll be a master. H hilarious, by the way. Um, <laughs> no, it's not how it works. How it works is the more you know, the more you know nothing. The more you understand the self, the more you understand that the self is an illusion. The more you think that you're awoken and enlightened and awakened, the more you recognize that you've just been awakened to more of your bullshit. <laughs> um, and, and truly, the masters that we respect are the most authentic with their humanness. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's that is it. You know, at the end of the day, even if we know, even if we like like truly get to a space of like oneness. Right. And it's probably like slivers of it. You know, we've all had slivers of it. Mm -hmm. You get to that experience of oneness. You're still human. Even if you know all this stuff, even still if have to poop. I know all this stuff, I still got to take a shit. You still, uh, I, 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 I still <laughs> have my ego. I still have my identity. I still have my stories. It's a part of the human experience. And, you know, I don't want to push like my beliefs onto people, but I do believe that as souls, as energy, we have chosen to be human. We wanted to experience what human felt like. And and now all of us humans are trying to get away from being human, but yet we chose this. And and I just, I find it interesting for myself because I, I see that in myself. I see this desire that comes out sometimes where it's like, oh, I just want to be over this like human part of myself. It's like, oh wait, but you're human, tap, tap, tap. You're human, did you forget that? And I think we really get to honor our humanness without becoming a victim of it. Mm -hmm. Having the tools to stand in our humanness powerfully, authentically, with that raw, like, transparency, here I am, yes, this is happening, oh my God, I'm full of so much shit right now, and I'm committed to something else. I'm committed to my authentic truth. I'm committed to possibility. I'm committed to living from a space of love, even when I don't feel like it. And, and that's my game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. We love you. It's been great. It's been awesome. <laughs> Share this uh, once we end it, if it inspired you. If you, would if you would like to come see us and be a part of our experiential workshop. Let me see if I can add this. Um, it is called thebridgeexperience.com. No, bridgeexperience.com. www.bridgeexperience.com. Will it show up? Will it? Will did it show up, guys? No, it did not. Well, I didn't want to do it. Um, so we love you. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so, so much for sticking in there. Some of you guys have been on the whole time. We love you. You're Share awesome. this. Keep being awesome. Freaking and, frick frack. And let's bring it back full circle to the beginning of this. Where can you get rid of something that is taking up space, that is not yes. serving you, that is not useful, that you don't love 100%, that doesn't bring joy to your life? Yes. What can you shed? What can you shed that would create more space for, for what you truly actually are calling in and what you truly actually desire and deserve? What can you shed? So really sit with that, be with that, and do some of that. We love you guys. And now we're going to go eat some food. We're hungry.
Blah. And my stomach starts to make Blah. weird noises. When I'm Rastafari, rude boy, sin simmer. Who got the keys to my villa? Who am I?